Okay, sorry, I had to switch computers about two minutes ago. All right, so I am going to talk to you today about something I'm super crazy passionate about. And I first want to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land. I'm on the Yoruga people's land. And I'd like to acknowledge the past present and emerging. But I want to dive into this work of a native bird that is local to this area and incredibly endangered and the potential for technology, if we can design it appropriately, to help us find sneaky species. The bird is Eastern bristle bird. There's only 10 to 14 left in Queensland, which is kind of incredible. Um, so I'm actually talking as a tech design researcher, but just for positionality, I have a conservation ecology background and environmental education background. So I dove into this during my PhD, and with that, I'll dive in. The reason we're interested in this isn't just for citizen science, but also nature engagement. Most activities relating to those two fields relate to visual perception, and audio has potential to be quite engaging as well. If we look, for example, at a digitally designed play bird-shaped house that is playful, people really got excited about it and kids really learned the birds in multiple different languages and different ways of engaging with it, which was quite exciting. But looking at a spectrogram is quite difficult. And my research has already shown a lot of the challenges around that. And bristle birds in and of themselves, I picked a ferocious beast of an acoustic problem. It is a wicked problem because these birds have short, sweet, and incredibly versatile calls. They're little DJs. So it's great to deploy sensors in the wild. This was in the early days of my PhD. And then you go to analyze the data and it can be quite tricky. And after a while, it gets pretty tedious and boring as you can see here. So I'm looking at doing participatory design interactions with lots of different people. So I worked really closely for five years with the Eastern Bristle Bird Recovery Team, deploying sensors in the wild understanding what their conservation needs and practices already are, their customs and cultures, and realize that this is a number of different NGOs and state and local governments, as well as federal. So it's a huge group of people. And also understanding what their knowledge is. I specifically came in and studied a species I knew nothing about. And it turns out only two people on the local team actually could identify the bird by sound. So I worked closely with them to not have any technological barriers using paper. And then we gave them access to all data that I collected with them because it's their data as far as I'm concerned. And then I worked more broadly with citizen science birder groups first, and they would work together to look at those collaborative interactions. But what I want to bestow upon folks that haven't done tech design before is you don't actually need the technology to do the research ahead of time. I did most of my PhD work using paper. Okay, so it can tell you a lot about practices and culture, just exploring different ways of doing things. And we also did lots of digital assessment of how people did things as well. And we looked at how people gain knowledge and barriers and opportunities for that through looking at visualizations, pictures of the birds, spectrograms, maps of the birds, and listening to sound. That's a bristle bird that I just overspoke. And then we have really cool things like the spectrograms, but we identified the challenges with interpreting them relating to those axes. And people got really creative in ways that I could not have predicted. And this was great. So this person saw it shaped as like a car track, which got me thinking, but this is a skull for crested cockatoo. And we also learned about what other people know about birds. So this person reflected on the Albert Slyer bird because they saw it in David Attenborough video, knew nothing about birds, but it got them really excited exploring the audio. And with birds, we're known to have two different calls by our birders and they really wanted to know, when you're showing me the spectrogram, does it include both the calls? Let's have a quick listen. Just uh, about 30 seconds left now, Jesse. Okay. So that second one has that female calling right after and they knew that, which was great. So what I really want to show you is it's important to look at interest, creativity, sharing, and long-term learning. And all of these aspects are often neglected. If you look at this, what shape do you see? If you look at this, what shape do you see? How about that one? We had some flowers, a chair, and some high heel shoes for some participants, for example. But this really helped make things memorable and people attributed different languages that they knew for the different birds. This then led to designing the Bristle Whistle Challenge. 
And it has many different components that relate to gameful, which is structured interactions, and playful interactions, those creative interactions, and how they interplay together to actually improve the science and what people want to do as participants in projects, not just as participants of the projects, but as an integral part of the project. And so I just want to acknowledge a few people that have been absolutely vital to this project. My participants are brilliant and passionate teammates. They are fantastic. People have given me photos to use and I've had a lot of technical support around generating different complicated visuals. I've had lots of support with funding I'm grateful for and I have a bunch of references if you're all interested. Thank you very much.